So welcome to another episode of the Talking Ball Snooker Podcast with you every Wednesday. And, and this one, um, this week comes out, well, right in the middle, really, of the, the World Championships and just coming to the end of the qualifying round and uh, looking ahead, really, at the Crucible and what's going to come up. So um, I'm Righto74, Michael Wright, your host, and uh, I'll let Lee say hello for himself. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Good to be here. This is part two of a two-part are always fun talking to this guy really looking forward to the chat so welcome and then the guy we're talking to probably needs no introduction but you will have heard from him in part one the last week but ian mcculloch hello ian yeah good evening boys how are we doing yeah good right. thanks good to see you and i was just wondering thanks. just to kind of kind of get us into the podcast tonight really you know we had a great first episode with you and to be honest, this is something we could probably build as a bit of a Netflix series. But for now, we'll just try and stick at this one. Um, well, well, you know, everything now is about the Crucible, about the World Championships. A lot of talk now. And, you know, you go on social media, it's everyone talking about what's going to happen uh, and speculating. And, and you've had, you know, you've had your fair share of um, and highs and lows and some really big highs at the, at the Crucible. Um is there any any memories from the you know the world champs? Anything around that that you know that comes comes to mind as a, a funny story or something to get us in the spirit into the world championship mood? Do, do you know, you know, speaking from a player's point of view, and, and and Lee can probably appreciate with to this that that it is a little bit of a privilege to, a privilege to play at the Crucible. You know, there's a mm. lot of players go through the careers and they don't play there, and then. You know, you can you can you can, you can see you know you, you talk to players what's the career highlights and all that lot and they you know and they'll go sort of like uh, go I played at Crucible, you know, um, you know I, I was lucky that you know I didn't just play there once I played there quite a few times I, I won matches there I got down to one table and uh, there's no I, I, I you can't really have any bad memories of it to be honest even when you get beat you know and obviously everybody's like what about what Sean Murphy they listen that don't matter now it's gone it hurt me at the time but but. There's, there's, there's like a million and one, you know, funny stories that went on and just, just not nothing bad, just, just, just happy times. And I, 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 I remember um, I'd lost, I'd lost it to Matthew in the semis in, in 05. And obviously there was, you know, the, the, the final with him and Sean was, was absolutely massive mm -hmm. um, in regards to, to me being in the top 16 or money I earned, blah, 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 blah. And, and obviously, so the final's on for two days and I'm just trying to do everything not to watch snooker on it, you see. So I'm sort of like, you know, I'm sort of like mopping and over in the house and I'm just doing any sort of jobs. And I thought, well, I'll get all the garden done. And anybody who knows where my house is, it's sort of like surrounded by woods. And uh, so I'd, I'd, I'd cut the back lawn and I thought I'd do, do the front lawns and I'll, I'll, I'll do all the laurels with the clippers and all that lot. And there's a public footpath runs outside my house. And on the front of the house, and uh, it's been there since they can't shut the. Pot. It's been there since Oliver Cromwell times. That's why they can't shut it off. It's like Oliver Cromwell had his last battle on this footpath or something like that. Anyway, um, so I'm 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 going full ball with the Clippers, and they're cutting the laurels at the side of the house, and and uh, and this bloke comes out of the woods with the dog, and uh, and I don't I don't know is there? I can't hear him. I've got the Clippers going. I mean, I just look round. This bloke staring at me. He's gone, all right, mate. I'm going, all right, pal. He's gone, uh, are you that, uh, are you that snooky guy? And as, he, as he's doing it, he's, got, he's giving it the cue in action with the arm. But as he's doing it, he's pulling the dog's head as well at the same time. The dog's been talking. He's gone, that snooky guy. I've gone, who do you mean? He's gone, that Ian, uh, Ian, Ian M M McCullough I went, McCullough He went, yeah, it's you in it. I went, sorry, mate, it's not me, that. He went, he, he, he went beep, beep, beep. He went, you don't half look like him. I can't say what he said, but he said, beep, beep, beep. And as he's walking off up the road, up the side of the woods, he keeps turning around and going. <laughs> You're a dope there's, 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 there's loads, there's loads, lads, you know, just happy times. Was it an Italian player that he was talking about, Ian McCullough? Yeah, I, I don't know, but he got me, I, 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 the, the, the amount of names I've been called over the years, he could have called me anything, anything else, it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> If you go on Wikipedia, it says Big Mac, I think, doesn't it? 
I've been called, yeah, I've been called a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, what are our thoughts then, you know, so kind of looking ahead, it'd be, it'd be quite interesting, uh, Ian, you know, as we talk about the World Championships, if there's anything you want to bring in, any memories that sparks off or thoughts on, on matches you've had or watched, um, you know, what, what's our thoughts? We're kind of, you know, just on the eve really of this and we've just had the last kind of tournament of the season before we get to the Worlds. And then have a Neil Robertson win and, and John Higgins reaching the final and that was phenomenal, again, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, again somehow not winning. Uh, what do you know? What do you make of that? Um, I think it's a sign that maybe, and this isn't being disrespectful in any shape or form. I think it's a sign that maybe John's not quite the player he was. Um, and, and sadly, because John Higgins was one of he, he was the, he was the hardest player I ever played, John Higgins, and it happens to everybody. You know, it, 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 no, nobody avoids a slip. And, there's, you know, he's still a fantastic yeah. player. You, you can't have the season he's had and not be a fantastic player. But if you look at the results he's had, putting the sort of like killer blow in, he's obviously getting a little bit harder now. And it gets harder as you get older, you know. And and, and it, it's not nice to see somebody lose a match like that. You know, as well as Neil played, uh, John had, a, I wouldn't say had loads of chances, but he did have a chance to put him to bed. And that was John Higgins' strength for a long, long time. And, you know, it's, 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 you know, we, we, we saw it with Henry and Haller. You know, we, 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 I remember Davis being 4 0 up on Ryan Day in Wales once. Nobody beat Steve Davis from 4 0 down. And they're all little signs that maybe, you know, you're not quite the player that you were. Some final looks tremendous to watch. But as you see, and uh, obviously John's usually so clinical when he gets a chance. And that that red was a howler that, that he missed in the last frame, the yeah. deciding frame. Yeah. It just That's not what pressure does to you. That's what pressure does. You know, if, if, if you'd have said, you know, if, if, if somebody had said to you 20 years ago that, that you know, there'll be, there'll be half a dozen players who score heavier than what Hendry did and will be more prolific than what Hendry was, you'd have gone, don't be stupid. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Nobody will come along who's better. And and it's, it's just progression of sports, isn't it? You know? In 10, 15 years' time, we're, you know, we're going to be looking, you know, when, when probably Ronnie, Mark and John are probably out of the way then, you know, it's, that's been realistic, you know, that, that, mm -hmm. that there'll, be, there'll, be some, there'll be some kid comes along who just just doesn't miss. You know, it, it, it will happen. It's just progression of sports, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And you said there, you said you reflected that, you know, John Higgins was almost the toughest player you faced. Is, is, oh. what, what was it about him then? I, I just, I just, could, I think I played him about twelve times. I think something like I think I beat him once. And you just, I, I mean, I, I, I grew up with Dennis Taylor and Dave Harold. You know, I, I fancied myself tactically against anybody. And I just, I just couldn't break him down. I remember he beat me at the Crucial. I think in two thousand one or two. I think something like that. And I think he beat me ten eight. And I remember coming out of the match and thinking, "How have I lost? I, I can't play any better than that." You know, he was, he, he was, you know, he, he, without naming other players, there was other top players around that time. And who, if you got on top of them, they just rolled over. Yeah. You know, they didn't want you, they didn't want to have a scrap with you. But John sort of like, you said, oh, you want a scrap? I'll have a scrap with you. Right. And I just, I just, you know, you, you, you'd, go, you'd go to China and you'd beat your 5 3 in China or 5 2 in China, you'd make 2 80s. And you're trying to, you're, you're trying to break the match down afterwards. You're going, what have I done wrong? Yeah. And he went, he went, I remember he beat me in Thailand once. I think it was 5 2. And, and, it, and it, I can't remember exactly how it went, but he went break, break, 2 0 up. And I went break, break, 2 2. And I'm in on something like 35, 40 the next. And I hit the bunch and I pot a red. Right? Yeah. And I don't pot another bun. And I lose yeah. 5 2. Right? And you're like going, hang on. <laughs> What's going on? He's in the next round and I'm on the play at home. But that, that, that was the class of the guy. Well, it still is the class of the guy. He's a great player. But that must be so soul-destroying, And You know, you, you've given it your best. And a lot of people will feel the same. You know, you played so well and, and yeah. still come away with nothing. You, you must think at times with certain players, how do they actually win? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I mean that, that's, that's, that's why the top players are supposedly, isn't it? You know, if you look at, I only ever beat Hendry once, you know, when, you know but I, I had some right humpings off Hendry. I, you know, I beat Ronnie a couple of times. Um, you know, but but they've all got they've all got good records against everybody else anyway, yeah. haven't they? You've just you've just got to sort of like you've just got to sort of you know when, when the chance when you do get a chance to beat them, you've you've got to make sure you take it, you know, because they don't come along often, you know. It's it's 
And, you know, there's, there'll be a lot of players who had worse records against those lads than I had, you know. So there's, there's, no, there's no disgrace in it, you know. No, God, no. It's just a job, isn't it? You know, there's, 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 unless you're number one, there's always going to be somebody better than you, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that run you had to the semi-finals, I mean, you know, the, the one you kind of were just talking about in a way, I suppose, and the, the loss to Stevens. But just to get that far, really, at the Crucible and having gone so far and deep into the tournament, I mean, what, what kind of things are going into your mind? Are you, are you having time to really psych yourself up? I mean, I'm trying to think what kind of player you were, you know, approaching big matches because it's, it's the pinnacle, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? it, it it's sort of like... Yeah, I, I I I just loved. Um, I never actually played that bad at the Crucible. Even when I got beat, I never played that bad. You know, even the first time I played there, Williams beat me ten four, and, I, and I, I didn't play that bad. He nicked about three or four on the black off me, and I just used to love. I, I, th- I think I think a big part of it is what's going on in your head. Well, I'm not. I don't think I know a big part of it's what's going on in your head, and it's not necessarily about. It's about playing well. This is what I drum up. I, I'm doing. I work with a couple of lads now on tour, and obviously I'm talking to them a lot at the moment because they've got the qualifiers in the midst coming and, you know, the what-if monsters knocking on the door permanently coming in, let me in, pal, you know, you could be playing bad, you could be... It's all about staying in control, isn't it? And and I think because I prepared as well as I could, I never went in there doubting myself. There was never there was never a grain of doubt. I never, I never, I never stood behind that curtain as much as I needed bicycle clips because the place, that's what the place did to you. Mm-hmm. I never stood behind that curtain and once went, I'm not ready for this. You know, I, I knew I knew I'd worked hard enough for it, and I, I, don't, I don't think he ever lost a decider at the Crucible, which you know, it's not a bad record, is it? So have you know, it, it's it's, and I think that's it, it, it wasn't it wasn't necessary. I, I always thought doing well in the world wasn't. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't crab your way through, obviously, but there was obviously going to be sessions where you weren't at your best, and they were the more important sessions than the ones where you played well. Because when you played well, you're expected to win a session. Uh, I remember I remember one against Mark Williams. I think I won it 6-2. And I had three tons and three eighties. I could have had six tons, you know. And, and it's easy to win sessions when you're playing like that. But it's the other sessions when when I had, I remember having, I can't remember what year it was, I played McManus. And, and I had an absolute shocker of a session. Uh and I think it was the middle of the session, and I was 4-1 down in the session, and I ended up crabbing the session 4-4, and that probably won me the match. You know, because it's not about, it's not all that the world qualifies, it's not about playing well. Playing well is a bonus. It's about, you, you, you'll see every emotion in that world championships. You know, pe- people who, who are playing to stay on tour, people are playing to get in different ranking structures. Um, everybody's got their own little agenda of why they want to do well, and that, that agenda can put you under pressure. And I always, my, my angle was, was, was you know, th- there's a million and one distractions if you want there to be distractions. Uh, money, that obviously goes with rankings. You know, the, 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 the deals that you get, you know, if, if you did well in the world, the work you got off it, because it was BBC. You know, I, I was getting texts for five years after I packed in, who have you got in the world, mate? People just thought I was getting the semi-finals of the world every year because I got the quarters and the semis back to back. And so you, you used to get a hell of a lot of work off it as well. And um, yeah, I, I just I just always thought it was about you know there was a lot there was a lot better players than me qualified for the crucible and, and and more than once and never won a game. There some some players would just turn up absolutely pumped, and and it, I would I, for me it was just about staying in the moment, staying in control, accepting that you know you can't play a best of nineteen match and not make a mistake, and when you make that that mistake, you've just got to accept it and deal with it. And that that's that was one of the little gifts. I didn't have many. That was one of the little gifts I had that, that you know, I, I, for some reason when I was in that sort of like environment, I, I could I could stay in control of myself. I, th- I think, Ian, uh, you spoke well about it there. I think one of your biggest benefits that you had was your bottle. Because as you say, you came through a lot of deciders. Uh, you always seem to play your best stuff when it really mattered. You're a big occasion player. Did you, did you feel as confident as you looked in those matches? No, no. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of the word bottle. To be honest, right. I never have been. I, I, I think all bottle is is confidence. And I think, I think if if you've if you've genuinely done the right things and you've got yourself in such a good place, 
when 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 the chance comes, you take it, don't you? Yeah. You know, um, and I, 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 it, 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 it probably is a bit of ball, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I just, I, I just. I don't know. I just, is it a bit lucky? Do you, do, you, do you make your own look by working hard? I don't know. But um, I, I, you know, I, I always, I did have one or two moments there when I had to produce, and 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 thank God I did really. I, I think I think uh, your ball's connected to your mental state, to be honest. Because, Absolutely. Because every single day you, you can handle it better than other days, so I think it's connected to your mental state at the time. It's, it's weird, isn't it? You, you, you can remember certain things that that you, and. There's days you just clear up. Um, when 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 it's like the hardest clearance in the world, and, and you just do it, and you don't you don't think about missing. And then there's other days where you need the balls over the pockets, and you still can't pop yeah. them. You know what I mean? You got a graph like you know it's just murder, isn't it? And and it's just it's just the game, and that that that's the that that is the game, especially at the crucial. It's a test of the mind, isn't it? You know, God knows how many sessions over over seventeen days. You know, it's you know, I mean, I mean, it's, it's not a fluke, is it? You know, because you've got to bear in mind that Mark Selby is rubbish. He's defending champion, right? But he's rubbish. People think he can't play, but he's a four-time world champion, and there's a reason why he's a four-time world champion because he knows how to win. He knows how to win when it really matters. It's phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. And he spoke uh, a bit earlier on about your your clearance against Graham Dock. Um, I think you were you were eight five up in that match, and he went nine eight down. And you, you forced the decider and you cleared up uh, with 63 in the decider. I remember watching that at the time, Ian, and I actually thought it was better than Higgins's 69. Yeah, I, I, it I, it know, was phenomenal. I've never, I've never watched it. I, 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 I actually love it. That's one break I'd love to see again. I look, it's not on YouTube or anything. And Graham had had three chances that frame and he'd missed a couple of times and not stuck me up. But he, he played a really good safety. And the safety he played was actually too good. And he put me in a bit of a hole and I had no option but to dig along red in. And, and, and you, you, you're not, you sort of like, just, you put in the red. Mm -hmm. Put the red and let's see what happens. And I got a bit of luck. I landed on the pink. Um, and when it sort of like got down to the colours, I think I think I doubled the yellow in the middle all. But I'd have been pretty unlucky to do it in, to be honest, if I'd have missed the double. I'd, I'd offer a chance of snookering him on the green as well. So I get the yellow. And then I leave the green into the black po black bottom pocket. And again, I play it in such a way, I, I, I probably could have played it a little bit firmer. I can remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> but as soon as I hit it, I knew it was in. But mm -hmm. there was always a chance if I'd have hit it, it had bobbled away anyway. Yeah. And then I have the brown, and I've got a chance if I miss the brown of snookering him on the blue. And 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 so I dabbed I, I dab the brown in. I only need the blue. I get the George Best out, pop, pop, the, pop, the, pop the blue to rest. and and. And then you need to snooker because it's sods low. It's amazing how big the pockets go and the, the balls go in it when, when, when you've all of a sudden yeah. you've won. But it, it, well, I, I always remember Neil Foles saying something to me. He, he, hung, he was hanging out the commentary box when I come backstage. I can't tell you what he said because um, you've not got enough bleeps. Um, but basically said that was a very good clearance and something on the lines of that. Hi. But very pleasing. Yeah. Uh, very pleased. Yes, it was. I know that, that, that might have been what he said. But no, it, it's weird. That's what I'm saying. Moments <laughs> like that. Um, and again, it boils down to if you've worked right and, and, and your mind's clear, you see everything for what it is, you know, and, and instead of looking at a shot and thinking, oh, if I miss this, I can do it in, you actually see it for what it is. And you go, actually, it's not the daftest shot. It looks the daftest shot, but there's a, there's, there's a chance I might not stick it. There's a chance I've got to get in a snooker. So percentage wise, it was probably marginally in my favour, you know, and, 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 and as it happens, it, it went in, and and was that the after that match, Ian? Was that the the, the time you you done a little jig out with the Christopher? You've got some. Well, we'd we'd have, we'd, have, we'd have a little bet. We'd have a little bet. I used to do all sorts of stuff. There was all okay. sorts of stuff around with the lads, saying words in interviews. Yeah. Um, one one of one of one of the well that that that, that they actually asked me to moonwalk, but I did that the year before. I think I beat Ebden and I moonwalked out. <laughs> can't moonwalk for toffee so they said right you've got to do a little dance if you win but <coughs> excuse me I always, I always remember the draw was done and and um uh there was there was there was the, the bookmakers put me quite quite a big price against Graham and I'd never lost to him and quite a few of my mates 
went quite heavy, to be honest. Um, yeah. So I, I knew they won a few quid as well. So it, it, it was nice for the boys as well, to be honest. Fantastic. You, you were saying back there, uh, Ian, you know, about kind of executing the the end of the match when you're a few frames up and you'd said there yourself almost that you nearly lost it from quite a, a good position. Um, and, and that sounds like, again, that comes back to the mental side. You said it gets harder as people get older, you know, as players to play at that level. What, what, just give us an insight. I mean, I'm a non-player, you know, kind of, I'm, not, I'm, I'm below amateur, whatever that is. But, you know, what, what, what changes in a player that, that makes it harder to reach the standards they used to go? Because if you're a non-player, you're thinking, well, it's not the physical side like football or another sport like that. No. Um, unless it's to do with the I, eyes I, I, and I, I, concentration. I, 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 yeah, I do think the physical side has a lot more bearing on it now than, than what it ever did do. I, I, I was I was around that time, I was super fit. Yeah. Um, you know, I was doing 30 mile a night on a bike. Uh, that was every night, middle of winter, freezing cold. I was out on the bike, um, looking like an arm robber with a bobble hat on, you know, and just getting out and doing it. And and um with with me, it was concentrating. My shoulder went, obviously I had the shoulder operation, but it didn't help. But with me, it was concentration. Um uh, my eyes were fine, um, and 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 that that was the bugbear with me it was concentration. And you start you start missing balls that you never used to miss, you know. And 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 and, and it happens to everybody, you know. John John did it the final, didn't he? You know, and, and you, you see players, you know, look at Hendry when he when he came to the end, you know, he he, he missed balls that he never used to miss, and that bit of once you start missing a few, that that bit of fear creeps in, and and it's and it's hard to still fully commit to them big shots when you know there's maybe that bit of a less chance you've bottomed. You've got to rate Mark Williams for that because he just, he just, mm. he's, he's preferred to hang himself on every shot. It's fantastic how Mark yeah. keeps doing what he does. Um, and and it, 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 it can be, your life changes, don't you? You know, you, you have kids, your, your priorities aren't as, you know, when you're young, all you want to do is play snooker, you know, and, 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 and playing every comp you can. And it's, it's not necessarily about the money. You just love playing and love competing. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you know, kids come along and, and 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 you get a little bit older and, you know, you want to sort of like use your time with your family a little bit wisely. And, and it's just, just there's there's a multitude of things changing. I don't think it's one particular thing. Um, I, th I think keeping fit maybe gives you a bit more longevity to your career. But I think the secret is, is, is no, nobody avoids the slip in any no. sport. You know, we were talking about Colin before with the darts, Colin Lloyd. You know, he's world number one. You know, he's one of your best pals. He doesn't play now, but when you're world number one, you can't go any higher and they can only go one way eventually, you know, and and, um, and nobody avoids it. And the secret is, is, is avoiding it. If you, if you can't avoid it, you've got to avoid it for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. And that's the secret, you know, and, and, and you've got to admire the lads now. You know, you look at the lads who are my age, like, you know, Adam Fergal O'Brien, you know, Joe Perry's a couple of years, younger than me, he's just done really well. He's won. He's won Wales. You know, these lads are having like 30-year careers now. And I'm a little bit envious, I'll be honest with you. Because mm -hmm. um, I'd love to still be playing. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a multitude of things. And, it, and eventually, you know, it, it, those lads, will, they'll, they'll fall away and they'll drop off the tour. And, you, you, you know, people go, they're still great players, but they're not the great players that they were. It's, 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 it's sports, isn't it? It's a difficult one, isn't it? It's almost... Um... You almost think, you know, is it better that a player goes out on a high and you think of them as that player out on a high? Or do you have the, you know, the Hendry comeback, the Jimmy White kind of every year with a new card, etc.? I mean, there's no right and wrong, really, is there? But it's interesting no, I mean, to see. It, it, it's up to you what you want to do. I, I always said when my days came to the end, I, I wasn't going to go to Q school. You know, if I wasn't good enough to stay on, I wasn't going to try and get back on through Q school, you know. And then, you know, you mentioned Jimmy there. Jimmy just, he just loves it, doesn't he? He's, you can't, he must love it because you can't keep putting yourself through it like he does. I, I, I do quite a bit of work with Jim and, you know, we chat about it and, and I just, my, my love, come the end, my love had gone for it. You know, the, the, the fire had gone out, the fight had gone. Um, you know, and I'd spent 20 years trying to get on top of people and, you know, have a good scrap with him. And I remember playing Luca Breckler and I just, I, I just, I just, I was 3-1 down, I just wanted to go home. And then if that, if that, mindsets there you're in the wrong job anyway aren't you you know I knew I knew I was I knew my shoulder was packing up I knew my shoulder couldn't contain it anyway. I'd been and played in Germany about a month two months earlier and I played Rory McLeod and we was in an aircraft hangar on a Saturday morning at half past nine on a Saturday morning and I looked around and thought what am I doing here mm. you know you, you, you're not you're not you're not there to win are you 
you know, and it's sadly, sadly, it just comes to everybody, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so looking at the world champs, we talked a bit about John Higgins there. I mean, you know, thinking about who's in the mix and you'd naturally look at the top 16 straight away, but there could be somebody who comes out from that. But, you know, who else are we looking at then? Neil Robertson's obviously had a tremendous season, really. He, he won again and he seems to have been picking up. But we've also seen a few surprise winners. We've seen people come from nowhere almost and, and pick up some ranking wins on the, the shorter formats. Who's, who's taken your interest over the last kind of... Six to eight months or so. The, 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 one, the one I can't believe, who nobody's given him a mention yet, is, is Mark Selby. Mm. You know, he, all right, he's, he's having a few problems, but he's had six weeks off, right? He's fresh. He's not trolled out to Gibraltar. He's not trolled out to Turkey, right? He, he's not played in this to a championship thing. You don't win four world titles and not know how to prepare properly for a world championship, and yet nobody gives him a mention. It's mm. comical. It just, it just, it just makes me laugh. And 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 I, I think Mark's Mark's the biggest threat for everything. I do. I think he's an absolutely phenomenal player. You know, and and, and he, he's he's off the radar a little bit because even the bookies don't think he can play. You know, they put him they put him at like fourth favorite to win the world, fifth favorite to win the world. It's wrong. He might, that's in my opinion anyway. You know, um, he, he's got a bit of a tricky. I, I think this could be the year that maybe. There's potential for a first Chinese player. I, I think maybe Bing Tao's possibly ready. I, th I think Zing Tong's still a little bit raw yet. Yeah. Um, phenomenal talent. Absolutely. Yeah. I always knew he was a phenomenal talent. I remember seeing him in China when he was at, uh, 13, 14 years ago. When he was about 12, he played as a wild card. Um, so I, I just, I don't think Zing Tao's, Zing Tong, sorry, is quite ready to win it. Um I just still think he's a little bit raw. He's not, he's not got the balance right yet that you need to do well at the Crucible. Um, and I think Bing Tao has, you know. Um, he, he's become a phenomenal player as, as, as Bing Tao. I can't believe he's... I think he's about number... What is he? About number, he must be number 16, is he? Because he plays Mark second match, does he? So he must be number 16, seeing if Mark's number one. Um, yeah, he, yeah. You know, I thought he'd be a little bit higher than that. Um but it, 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 I think it's about as open as, as as what it's been for a long time. You know, if, if you look at if you look at Neil, as great a player Neil's been and is, Neil's gone into the world for three or four years and gone like that. He's the man, and he doesn't do well. So there's a reason why he's not why he's not producing at the Crucible. Um, what that reason is, I don't know. Um, but he's not playing his best snooker there, and and he, and he does have a He's had quite a few banana skin results here as well. I think he's lost to, to Rob Milkins a couple of times in the first round, you know, and, and, and results that you'd have expected, not no disrespect to his opponents, you would have expected maybe Neil to, to you know, do the job with we, we, we a little bit in hand, you know, and, and he's not done. So it, I don't know, does, is, is it not his favourite venue? I, I don't know. Um, you know, if you look at Ronnie, I said if Ronnie turns up and plays well, you know, we've all got rounds full, haven't we? But if you look who Ronnie's lost to in the last sort, I know he's won it. He won it, was it two years ago? Was it, it must be two years ago when, when they were behind closed doors? Yeah. He's openly admitted he doesn't like it when it's full of people, you know? Yeah. And if you look who Ronnie's lost to in the last, well, you know, where Ronnie was formidable there, if you look who Ronnie's lost to in the last sort of like 10 years there, he's lost to Barry Hawkins, he's lost to Ding, he's lost to Ali Carter. And these were all players who, once of a day, he just brushed aside comfortably. You know, he lost to Young Kale a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and and is that is that a sign that listen, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't be surprised if Ronnie won it again? And I'm not knocking him, but is it a sign that Ronnie's 47 now, or 46 or whatever he is? You know, they're not. There's a lot of younger lads in the field, isn't there? You know, it's. Um, I think he's about as open um, as it's ever been, to be honest. Yeah, because you can remember the times we were only talking about two or three, four people tops to win the championship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's a good show. You mentioned Bing Tao. I think he's got a great chance as well because yeah. although although he's still a young laddie and he's been around forever, you know, I think he won the World Cup when he was 15. So yeah, he's got a lot of yeah, experience. Yeah. yeah he's, he's very, for, for his age, his game's very, very mature. You know, and I know, I know lads who practice with him at the academy. And, and 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 they they just say someday he's at. I mean I know all great players are good in practice, you know, but it, they say some days he he is phenomenal, you know. Yeah. So, so he's got the game. Um, 
I, I, had, I had, I don't know, I had a bit of a theory a few years ago about some of the players from the Far East, maybe they didn't really like it when it, when it got really hot for them. You know, when, when the pressure was really on, they didn't really produce the best, especially there, because it is a cooking pot. Um, you know, is Bing, is Bing Tao going to be the one to book the trend? I don't know. Who are you looking at, Lee? You must have some thoughts on uh, players that you're interested in following or you've got a feeling could go far. Yeah, uh, well, for me, it was, um, I think Robertson's looking good. Uh, I, I think if Robertson can get over, yeah, and I, I think it's the crucible itself that, that holds Robertson back because he, he told us that. Uh, so much he finds it quite cramp and yeah. But but I think he, if he can get over that and he's a tall lad, you know, between tables and get back to his seat and stuff. Uh, I think if he can get over that, I think he's he would be my tip for this year. And Bing, I think, I I think it, say, it, yeah, if he got down to one table, definitely. Yeah, because obviously the place opens up, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and you, obviously you can never write off uh, Ronnie or no. or Selby. You know, you can never write these guys off, or even Higgins. Higgins could. Oh no, absolutely! He's so classy that he could bring it back. Yeah, you know, you you, you look at players like Stu Bingham, and 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 Stu's been yeah. off the radar a little bit, you know. But he had a maximum. Did he have a maximum movie? Was it Jim or was it um, was it Turkey? I can't remember which was. You know, you can't be playing bad. And Stu's another one. I think he's a fantastic player. Mate. I always have done. And yeah. he, he's won it before. He's not going to be scared of winning it again. Stuart's never been scared of winning anything in his life. Mm. And you know, one thing with Stuart Bingham, he'll have prepared, right? Yeah. The effort will have gone. You know, and he's always a dark horse. He only got pipped, was it? Was it the semis last year against Murphy? Was it 17 16? Was it a 17 15? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, so, so, th- th- I just think there's that many good players now. And, and, and that's, that's before you even start looking at the qualifiers. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got your, Walden's playing out of his skin. And what a great player, Ricky Walden. He's a nice lad as yeah. well. I, I, I he did loads for me and Dave Arrow did a hell of a lot for Ricky when he was a kid yeah. and, and he, he's not a guy I thought he was finished mate with his bike you know I, we, I, I speak to Ricky quite a lot and we all you know he was sort of like looking a bit doom and gloom and all of a sudden he's, he's turned a massive corner a little bit unlucky not to be back in the 16 as a seed you know that final frame against Kyron in um, in Jim in the semis I think it was if he wins that he's back in the 16 it was worth about a quarter of a million quid to win that frame Wow. You know, he's, he's got enough anyhow, Rick. Don't worry about Rick. He's got plenty. So, but, <laughs> uh, you know, but, he, he, you know, you're looking at players like, you know, Joe Perry. He's just won the Welsh. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? He, he's going to be coming in. You know, Joe's been to the semis before. What, what, this is what gutted me a little bit when I, when, when I never actually got my place in the 16. The top 16 players, they don't want to play Ricky Walden. They don't no. want to play Joe Perry, right? They don't want to play lads who know, know what it's about. There. They want the first timers. They were wet behind the ears, mm. right? But they can get a nice, comfortable 10-3, 10-4, 10-5, not break sweat and you're into the tournament. They don't want to be scrapping it out with somebody like Joe Perry or Ricky Walden, 10-8, 10-9, that sort of mm. stuff, or even getting B. You know, the, 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 I wouldn't be totally surprised if somebody came through the qualifying. I wouldn't be mm. totally surprised. It happens more and more now, you know, where, where, where a qualifier will get to the semis. You know, it, it just happens. It happens... A couple of years ago, it was McGill and um, who else was it? Can't think. Um, oh, my memory's terrible. But there's, you know, you get, oh, it's Gary Wilson, wasn't it? Was the other one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you get, you're getting qualifiers getting to the semis more and more. And that shows the, the gap is closing between the middle rank players and the top players. Mm. And of, of course, we've, we've, we've seen with the flat draws and, and stuff like that, Ian, these uh, qualifiers and that, they're not scared. You play in the top guys and, you know, it's a different game for, where it was before when uh, the absolutely. top guys were protected. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that was one of the, on the old system, um, you know, around 2004, 2005, I'd have probably walked the top eight, you know, and I was, I was still scrapping to get into the 16 and the guys who were at 14 and 15 were winning off as many matches, you know, and, 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 it, and it was actually, it was better then. I think Hallett won I think Mike Hallett won one or two matches in two years and stayed in the top 16 on the old system. It wasn't a lot of matches. And, and obviously now, I, I, listen, it doesn't matter what system's in place, you know, and it doesn't matter what 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 rounds they do, draws and stuff like that. If you win snooker matches, everything else will take care of itself, you know. Um, you know, and things evolve, systems change, rankings change. And 
I think it's great way it is now. I think if, if you win a tournament, you deserve to be rewarded. You know, you you, you, you shouldn't be provisionally, you know, the best player on the on the planet and yet be ranked number 18, which could potentially mm. happen on the old system. Now it can't happen. Yeah, it's, I, I quite liken it to, um, well, to football, really, in the championship. It just reminds me of that, really, where you've got a group of teams who can beat each other and it's all cut and thrust playing for the playoffs, etc. And being a Forest fan, that's kind of where it's at at the moment. And, uh, you're Preston, aren't you, Ian? Bit of Preston, bit of Blackburn. Oh, blimey, well. Very, very contentious subject at the moment after the performances at the weekend. Yeah. I'm, well, si I'm sitting on the there. fence and getting splinters. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm going to throw another name in there. We haven't mentioned this name, and it's I don't know why. It just came to me earlier. And, and, and you know, and I listened to Dave Hendon's podcast earlier, and he was talking about form not always being an indicator of doing well in the world champs. But um, I'm going to throw another name in and, and see what you think. But I've got a feeling for Mark Allen. Great yeah, play. I've just got yeah. a feeling. I've got a feeling for Mark Allen. I don't, I've got, it comes from nowhere, and it's, you know, and, and I won't take any credit if it goes anywhere. But I honestly think. He's just there's something about him and, and the way he goes yeah. about his game that he actually. Easy, the, game's, the, the, game's, the game's too easy for him, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He just he pots balls for fun, doesn't he? You know, he just he break builds for fun. It's too, it's too easy for him. And if you look, if you look at his track record at the Crucible, has he had one or two semi-finals? I don't think it's more than two. Is it? I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. You know, he falls into that bracket of Stevie Maguire for me, who who, who yeah. for their ability and how great not not just good players. Like great players, class players, to, to have that record at the Crucible for somebody of, of how good Mark's been, he's on a Crucible front, he's an underachiever there. Yep. You know, does he not like it? You don't know. Does, does he, you know, some, some people play there and never settle there. It's just, it's, it's unique, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. It's just, it's one of those, isn't it? You kind of think, but also it's the duration of it. We've seen a lot of players do well this year and it's been a very, you'd never have predicted some of the winners or some of the people who <laughs> got far in tournaments. Um, <laughs> and some people will say that's because it's shorter format. Some of these, you know, tournaments that we've had, you know, and even some of the most lucrative just be in a couple of frames almost, you know. Um, but this is, a, this is a real test, isn't it? And it's not a normal tournament because of the you know, amount of games you have to play can you can you think back to that you know that kind of looking ahead and you're working with a few players you said now I mean you can't really betray their confidence but what constitutes success for them I mean are they talking to you about their hopes and what they're hoping that, to, that's, to achieve yeah if, if, if you're going to work with somebody you know you've got to be honest because if you're not honest with the person you know if you're asking somebody for help and you're not honest with them they can't help you so you've got to be honest, you know, they, they, they've got to be on, on every front because if, if they don't tell me, I can't help them, you know. And I'm not saying I'm a great messiah because I'm not by any shape or form, but the one thing I will say is I've never worked with a player that hasn't showed progress. Um, and I've got, especially with the world, I've got good experience in the world. And, and the main thing I'm working with the lads at the moment is, is just about, like I say, you know, the, the, there's a constant knocking at the door and the what-if monster stood at the door, isn't it, going, let me in. Let me in. Let me, I want to get in your head. I want to blow your brains out, right? And it's about just keeping them in that that their happy place. That when they go out there, they, there's nothing guarantees success. There's nothing guarantees winning. But there's a lot of things you can do that reduce your chances of failure. And it's about getting them in that good place. And everybody I've, I work with or work with has been different characters. Some have been different challenges. Some. Some you can talk to a certain way, some you can't talk to a certain way, some you can be hard with, some you can't be hard with. And they're all different, you know, but it's about getting them in that good place. Um, you know, I, I, Ashley Eagles a good one at the moment. He, he's, he's been a massive work in progress. Um, and, and and he's, you know, he, he, he's, he's slowly started winning a few games, beating a few name players and stuff like that. And he's getting there. You know, he's, he's, he's on the upward curve, which as long as you're on the upward curve, you're going in the right direction. It's... Um, I envy him being players because I'd love to have another go myself, but I don't envy him because it's, it can be a horrible, horrible and very lonely profession. I yeah, looking, I mean... I just, sorry, I was just looking, and I'll bring you in in a sec, Lee. I'm just looking at Ashley Hugel, actually, and again, by the time this comes out, we're going to know really how he's got on, but but the draw in the qualifiers is interesting. I think he's got Han Cornell Young, the winner of that game. Um, and he could play Martin Gold on the way through if uh, if he's successful. And you just kind of look at it and think, uh, this could be an interesting one for him, couldn't it? 
I, I think you, you can look at every draw. You can look at every draw in that qualifiers and one player is playing to stay on the tour. One player is playing to stay in the 32. One player needs to win to get on the one-year list. One player needs for this. One player needs for that, mm. you know. And then there's all the stuff that's underlying that you don't know about what them players need as well, you know. So it, it, it's, 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 it's the world... The world qualifier is, is, is the biggest minefield in the world, isn't it? As, as a, you know, you, you, you come out after that final qualifying round and you've won it and, and you just feel like 50 foot tall. It's yeah. like, in some respects, it's bigger than that first round of the Crucible. And, and you come out and you've lost it. I think I won it, I think I won it six times and I lost it six times. And, and you lose it. And, and like, you know, I lost a 10 9 on the black to Drago once. Uh, and, and I lost a 10-8 to Watana, a 10-8 to Hawkins. Mm-hmm. And, and you're like thinking, oh, you just, you, you, it kills you because you see them. You should want to finish. I, I don't know what's better. I don't know what's, I don't know what's better if you know what you're missing at the Crucible. So if you get beat, that it doesn't matter because you've never been there. Or, or does it hurt because it's that good and you want to get there that I don't know. The, 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 the mind, the mind just blows you. It's just the best comp of the year for me. That final qualifying round is phenomenal. The things you see going on in that is just it's just phenomenal. Twitch fest. Oh, a twitch! It, it, it is a twitch fest. You know, this play. I think Adrian Gunnell played it about six to seven times, and, and couldn't win it. Do you know? It just, yeah. it's, just, it, it's amazing if you, if you get something in your head, and you can't get that out. It's just it's just brutal, isn't it? So what's, what's it like playing there, Ian? What's it like playing there? And and I'm not sort of talking about the experience of playing at the Crystal Ball, but the weight of sort of history and what that championship is you know can you feel that when you're playing you know the weight of the championship it, it, it's not a normal what, tournament yeah all, all, all you want to do don't you, is, is, is a, when you turn pro all you want to do obviously you want to win a tournament yeah. but it, it's like it's like the holy grail isn't it getting to the crucible yeah. you know and, and, and it's like it, it, that that sort of like importance importance sorry not importance nessness of the final qualifying round never went away. It was always, it was always, it was always a great way to finish your season off. You know, um, if you finished off at the Crucible, great. If you finished off the Crucible with a couple of wins or a win there as well, it was even better. And it was just, it, it's just, it, it's just a magical place to play. It's got, it's just, we're, 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 I don't think there'll ever be a venue in snooker, you know, you know, even like the old conference centre, Preston, you'll know, There'll never be a venue like the Crucible, just just for the memories that it creates. And it's just obviously if you've been, you know what it's like. It's you know, people go there and go, Oh my god, it's tiny. Yeah. You know, they see it on TV and they think it's huge. And I think that that that's also what adds to it because mm. it's that it's that intimacy. It's the only comp that you'll ever sit next to your opponent. Mm. Um, which isn't nice if you don't get on with them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but it, it, it's just, it, you know, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to go there. I'd love to play there one last time. It's never going to happen, but I'd love to play there just one last time just for that, the adrenaline buzz you get from even being just sat sat in the uh, sat in the dressing rooms and they yeah. used to play the, like, the old sort of like snooky music over the audio. And, and, and this is like 20 minutes before and you're right to be going, and you know you're going to war basically. You yeah, know, you, 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 and you and you you stand at the top of them steps, and obviously the barriers up, and the middle bits open, and you just see it's full, and and it's just it's just the best place in the world, and I can see why people put themselves under it to get there. Do, mm-hmm. do, do you know what I mean? Because it's just, it's just such. I'm say I was lucky. I, you know, I, I got there more than once, and I did all right there. It's just you know to, to win it when you know you look you look at the, the one time winners like your, your Binghams, your Graham Dots. What an achievement, you know, you can do it. Yeah. Great players, great achievement, great achievement. You must have to pinch yourself sometime, you know, obviously what you've just described, and you just described it so well, but, you know, when you're getting to the semis and stuff and you're close to winning that match in the semis, you must you must be pinching yourself, thinking, is it actually me standing here doing this? It, it, it was weird, you know, it's funny because I, I, I did a, an interview with somebody a while ago and, and, and they were asking about that. And, and they said, how did I feel when I lost I lost to Matthew Stevens? I'll, I'll be honest with you, I got back to the hotel room. My wife was due bursting with so many times. She was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And and I actually got myself in, in, in such a good place mentally that 
I couldn't see me not winning it. Um, I, I remember being 16, 13 down to Matthew and thinking, oh, right, two big efforts, get it back to 16, 15, get him under the gun. Never once thinking I'd blown it, you know. Mm. Um, and I got back to your show, I, I, I burst out crying. Mm-hmm. And it was just like a big adrenaline release, you know, it just, just, um, just weird. But, you know, you look back now and it obviously, obviously it's a really proud moment. You know, it's, it's, it's there's, you know, there's, there's not everybody gets to the crucible and, and even fewer get to down to the, I'm not sure what the stats is, but there's, there's even fewer get down to the one table there, you know. So uh, to get down to one table and win and then win the whole thing is even better. It's just, it's just, um, it's just, it's just, man, you, you, you can't, you can't explain it unless unless you unless you walk down them steps when it's yeah. full. You know you, 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 you can try and explain it, but it, it's just it's just it is it, it, it's a snooker player a natural show off. Whether yeah. whether you, whether you know you just want to, and that is the best place to show off, show people you can play snooker. No, there's not there's not one bad player playing the crucible. You know they yeah. can all play. You know it's it's just but it's that's that's like the ultimate bloody stage to go and show off how good you don't need to prove to anybody how good you are. You've got the but it's just ace. to play well there is is just just phenomenal. I think for yeah, weeks absolutely. for weeks afterwards, I think I would have been saying to the family, "Look, when I come downstairs, I want you all at the bottom, and I want you to all pass <laughs> as I come down the stairs." Come on! <laughs> it's just yeah. it, it, even you go and watch, you know, you, 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 you it's it's sort of a bit of a, Dave Harold never qualified the same year as me. Right. So whenever I played there, Dave never played there. Whenever Dave played there, I oh, never wow. played there. So I used to go and watch Dave and Dave would come and watch me and stuff like that, you see. And, 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 and you were on that balcony. You, you wanted your mate to win. But at the same time, you were going, I was sat with me and all that lot, you know. And it's just, um, it's just, it's just amazing. It's just an amazing place. He was maybe scared they got you in the draw, Ian. Who, Big Dave? Big Dave. No, he beat me 10 9, didn't he? 2000 and. Beat me ten nine. I got a kick on the green. Not that I, not that I remember it. Uh, <laughs> got a kick on the green. I was clearing up. Got a kick on the green. He beat me ten nine in two thousand and I think it was six. I think it was the year I had to yeah. go and qualify when 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 Murphy had won it. He beat me ten nine. I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got drunk with him about a week later. <laughs> doesn't matter now, does it? It's, 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 you can look back and laugh. So it doesn't matter, does it now? Yeah, and, and, and Dave was a great player back in the day oh. as well. You know, what What, what was it that, um, what was the reason Dave gave up? Did they drop off or did he just pack it in? He, he, had, he had problems with his eyes, didn't he? He, he got, um, he had a, he, and it, to be fair to him, he kept it very quiet, kept it very quiet. Um, he had, he got like a, a blister on his eyeball. Oh, right. And it was weird. He, he, he started, he, he was like, he'd get it down on the shot. And, and it was accumulation of, of the lighting, and he was getting like double vision and stuff like that. Plus, plus, you know, he, he wasn't young. He was how long is this Dave stopped now? It must be, must be six years. So it'd have been David had been 48, 49, something like that. But what, what a what a great player he was. He was Fantastic. phenomenal playing it. But, but the, the, the go on about John Birch and stuff like that. I think Dave Arrow was the best amateur there ever was. I saw him play money matches uh, back in the day playing Jimmy White. Playing Willie Thorne, and, and he was phenomenal. Mm. He was a phenomenal yeah. player. You had to scrape Dave off the table. Oh. Yeah, he, he was, he was oh. so hard to beat. Yeah, yeah. He he, he he was he was phenomenal. That, that's you know. You, you, I think I think his record against Henry was. I think he, he played him fifteen times. And it was eight seven to Henry. You know, that's <laughs> not many had that record. Henry once admitted he was his bogey player. I want a record that is. You know. So the, 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 there was loads of them, but they're, just, they're all great players, aren't they? That's it. And, and do you know, do you know, to have a record against Henry like that, and Dave, you know, you could be forgiven for saying when you watched him play, this guy's, you know, why has he got a record against Henry like that? But it's just so tough to beat. Yeah, I can remember the, remember the first time I saw him play in Centre Q in Blackburn about 1988, something like that. And he was playing a guy called Colin Morton. And mm. all you, know, you remember Colin, what you Colin was a great yeah. amateur. He was from from, from Accrington, yeah. was Colin. Never, never really did it as a pro, to be honest. And I'm watching Dave. Colin's just pumping everything in, and Dave's just picking balls out for him. And when Dave did get a shot, he got down with that stupid queuing action he had, right? <laughs> and he missed something. I just picked the team are all rubbish, <laughs> right? And then, and then, and then I remember him playing. Um, 
they went they went to Leicester to play Willie. Uh, God bless him. Um, there was there was um, there was Dave Harold. I think Short Catali went. Mm. There was a guy called Steve Wally from Preston. You might remember Steve Lee uh, <laughs> from Preston. Steve Wally. I, I, I remember the name. Yeah, and, and they went they went down to Leicester to play, and I think it was it was Willie. Um, Stefan Masrosis and I think the other one was Sean Lanigan and and Willie gave Dave he gave Shawcat 14 start and Shawcat never missed Shawcat played great and then he played Dave and he gave Dave 14 start and Dave just destroyed him the day the day after Willie came in the club and went I'm not happy about this start it's a true story this by the way I'm not happy about that start and they all thought, oh, well, we've missed the ball. He's given us 14. We've had a few quid off him. And Willie's <laughs> gone. He's gone. I couldn't concentrate off 14. He said, I'll give him, I'll give him 21. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave's like that. <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> but no, I, I, I saw him play Jimmy for money um, in the early 90s. And he just, he, just, he was a phenomenal player. Just, oh, well, Lord, there was some great players on the back then. There's great yeah. players. They're all yeah. great players. No bad players. And, and talk, talking of a good player, and so to to yourself, I mean, I think what I'd like to do, if you would indulge us on this, is just to go through a little bit of a quick fire round. So uh, we're going to call it clearing the colours, and we do this with all our guests. Um, so the first one for the yellow, I'm going to give us a start. So fairly easy yellow, really. But um, who's the funniest player on the tour, from what you can make out or your experiences around them? Any thoughts on your funniest player? You've got to know him. Dave Harold, you've got to know him, right? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> just any anything for a laugh. Very funny. Not comedy funny, just 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 daft. Just funny. Yeah. <laughs> any anything went with Dave. I love that. I love it when people say names that we don't necessarily know publicly so yeah. much about. Oh, there's, there's, there's loads inside. of funny lads. It's, Selby's a funny lad who tell you jokes all day long. You know, but Dave wasn't the sort of guy who'd tell you jokes all day long, but you go out and have a few beers and just just anything went, you know, anything went. It was funny. Hmm. Great. Brilliant. Green. So, green, green ball, green ball, green, uh, Ian. Your favourite venue away from the Crystal Ball? Oh, I've got to be pressed in the old hall. Shame, it's a shame it shut down. Yeah. Um, just obviously for, for personal reasons for me, but if, if you'd never been to the Guild or you wouldn't, you don't understand, but it was like it was like a big horseshoe. Um, and not dissimilar to the Crucible, really, but you could you could walk right around the top of the Guild Hall and because it was unique, right. you could actually watch um eight snooker matches or what you could definitely watch four at once. Mm -hmm. And it was just it was just I can remember um I used to go when I was a kid, you know, I can remember. I remember actually peering through the curtains in the middle of winter in 1989 or 90. Couldn't afford a ticket. Peering through the curtains, watching Andrew dish up against Davis in the final of the UK, freezing cold in the middle of winter. Wow. Um, and then going when there was a guy from Preston called Chris Cooks and Chris turned pro on the old pro tickets. And his first tournament was the World Qualifiers at Preston. And he actually lost to Gary Wilkie. Uh, to Gary Wilkinson to qualify and he said I'd love to play you love to play you and, 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 and luckily that I did and I did not did or either he did lovely well it's so far so good yellow and green down um, let's go for the Browns so you might have already mentioned him but just in case we'll give you another chance but um, who do you think is going to win the world championship for the first time in their career who's the next Oof. day champion I'm um, um, um. I'm going to say Bing Town. Leave it at that. That's a good shout. Yeah, we've had a... Hmm. Well, what would you say, Lee? We've had a lot of Kyron Wilsons, haven't we? There's, there's been a lot of Kyron Wilsons, yeah. Uh, Bing Town, I think we've had a couple... A few Bing Towns now, yeah. I am a yeah. massive, massive fan of Kyron Wilson. I really am. I, I love the way he plays snooker. He graphs... So he, he, he gets everything he should get out of snooker. My only concern for, for Kyron, and I know he's been to the final, is he reminds me a lot of what Barry Hawkins was six, seven, eight years ago. And he has to put a lot in mm. to get a lot out. And I just wonder whether, I'm not saying he can't win the World, because of course he can win the World, he's a great player. I just wonder whether for the duration of the tournament, he takes a bit out of himself. 
Good. You remember him when you get to the semis, you're only halfway through. Um, and he's a young, fit lad, and he's still got every chance. And I wouldn't be surprised if he did win it because he's good enough too. But I just, I just wonder, does he take a bit out of himself? I might be probably I'm completely wrong. I know what you're saying, Ian. He seems to put so much into every shot. Yeah. But he and gives it 100 percent Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's a brand new way, Ian. The blue ball question. I always think this is a tricky blue. You're on the side cushion, it's a thin cut to the middle. Which actor would you get you to play? Would you get to play you in a film of your life? Uh, Denzel Washington. Oh, easy. <laughs> End off. Perfect. End off. Don't need Hello. to tell you why. That's all. Massive. <laughs> Got a lot in common. A lot of people struggle <laughs> with that one, don't they, Lee? A lot of people struggle nah, with that. It's obvious. It's obvious. Well, we, we, we were going to say, but yeah. <laughs> I say Tom Cruise, but he's too short. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Kenzel Washington. Didn't see that coming. We, we, we could talk about the Oscars now, couldn't we? But no, no should we leave Oof. it? No, should we leave it? Contentious is that. Should he have done it or not? I don't know. Let, let's, uh, was Chris Rock out? I don't know. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> anyway. Um, what about the nicest player? We're talking about the players, and I'm always interested to know that, you know, it sounds like snooker just has generally nice people in it and, and down-to-earth people and sort-of-the-earth people. But who stands out is, a, is an all-round good egg that you think, do you know what, quality person, that person? Oh, there's loads, isn't there? Look, there's 120-odd lads on tour. The reality is not everybody's going to get on with everybody. That's the top and bottom of it. Um, yeah. Fergal O'Brien's one of the nicest lads you'll ever meet. You know, you, you could probably shoot Fergal and he'd tell you you've got a nice gun. You know what I mean? It's too nice for his own good, isn't he? Um, you know, Barry Hawkins, lovely lad, and he I, I, a good mate of mine, Anthony Hamilton. You know, Ant's just, just, he's just, he's too cool for school, Ant, and he just, he just, he, Ant's just ace. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've been on holiday with Ant, I've got drunk, I'm going to say another word, that I've been drunk with Ant more times than you can shake a stick at. And he's, he's just, he's just, he says it as it is, you know. Um, there's, there's loads of good lads, to be honest. You know, it's not, I say, not everybody's going to get on its life, isn't it, that? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, more, most of the lads are all good lads, to be honest. Okay, so, black ball question, to clear the table, Ian, what would you call your autobiography if you wrote one? Oof. Lucky. Because I think I have been lucky. I'm not just in snooker. I think I've been lucky in life. I've, yeah. had, I've had bad times. Everybody has bad times. But I think overall, um, I've not had any more bad luck than anybody else. But I think I've been very, very lucky um, to, to have two beautiful, healthy children um, who aren't children anymore. The lad's my size. I mean, my daughter's now in Australia. She's 20. I've had a fantastic wife and partner in Wendy who was, you know, it's never, it's, my marriage isn't a bed of roses. She got the good end of the stick, obviously, marrying me. But, <laughs> but what, what, behind everybody's success, there's, there's generally a good woman. And yeah. I'm, I'm not, you know, that's, that's, and, and I don't think, you know, as a snooker player, you go through ups and downs emotionally. Um, and, and for the want of a better word, I could be a bit of a bastard when I was going through, you know, what yeah. we used to call EMT, pre-match tension. And it's the wife who bears the brunt, you know, and 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 probably probably not a nice person to live with at times. You know, that's the reality of it. And, and that's the one side of the game I don't miss, the pressure that it brings. But no, I, th I think I've been very, I've got a great, I say great wife, great kids. Um, Snooker was very generous. Uh, it still continues to be very generous to this day. Gave me more than, you know, if you'd have told me when I walked in Raleigh Stuka Club on Guild Hall Street in 1987, that it was going to give me what it gave me and does give me, I'd have gone, you're on drugs, you know. Um, but I worked hard for what I got. Um, and I know, I, 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 I think I've been quite lucky, to be honest. Better than meeting you guys as well. You know what I mean? It doesn't get any better, does it? <laughs> Obviously, that's a fantastic answer. I'm very well <laughs> I want to meet Denzel Washington now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh dear. Look, I, I just want to thank you. I mean, what really came across, I've not met you before, but after the first episode, I just came away with that kind of glow, really, of meeting someone with that positive attitude to life. And and that came across abundantly. And I know that, you know, you, you still get a lot, you know, a lot of work in terms of after dinner speaking and presenting and then MC. I can see why. I can see it's that personality. Um, and thank Never you. Never should all. To, <laughs> to, yeah, I'm not going to say that. And two things that, that I've learned as well tonight that I didn't know, and I'm going to keep these because I like them. I didn't know about the, the what if <clears throat> monster, so I'm going to keep that one. The, the what, what if, if monster. monster. Oh, yeah. If the what if monster wants to get in your head, he will do, won't he? <laughs> and, and the other bit was that I like a bit of rhyming slang, and I've not heard George Best for rest, so I'm, I'm keeping that oh, yeah. one as well. <laughs> My, my old mate, my old mate Mark Wilson from I used I used to do a lot of work for William Hills on the on the radio, and um, and my old mate Mark Wilson I still speak to Mark to this day. Mark does a lot of rugby punditry now, and and we used to work on the radio on, on when the snooker was on, and, and everything was rhyming slang. So the rest was George Best, the, the rail was Dan Quayle. So it was it was just it was just everything. It was just it was just it was funny. If Mark, 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 if Mark ever watches this, which you probably not with probably not watching because it's something to do with me. But he'd love it that he got the mention. He's a great lad, he's Mark. <laughs> George so, Best. So, so I just want to thank you, Ian, really. You know, like I say, I really no, I've enjoyed, enjoyed it. Enjoyed meeting you over these two episodes, yeah. Um, yeah. cracking conversations. Yeah. And um, and Lee, I'm sure you'll want to say something as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's always been nice speaking to you, Ian. Uh, you're infectious, but in a good way. I think always. Do you know what I love? I've, I've, I've obviously watched a few of the podcasts, I've watched the ones with Billy and stuff. And, and it's great listening to, to, to like, because everybody's got their own little angle, haven't they? Yeah. You know what I mean? Their angle on this. You know, 100 people might see the same thing, but they all see it differently, don't they? And, and listening to Billy Snadden talk the other week, Billy, what a great guy Billy was. Not was, is, I've not seen him for years now. And, 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 you know, some of the older players, it's great listening to what they have to say and stuff like that. And, and it's just, you know, faces who you've not seen for years and stuff. Like yeah. it's, just, it's, just, it's just really good, isn't it? I enjoy it. 